Hi, in this video, we're gonna be discussing Tenstack's React Query. You will learn how to make API requests using React Query, both fetching and mutating the data, and how to make dependent calls. Then you're gonna learn how you can implement features such as loading, and we're gonna check how to handle errors. While we are there, we're gonna see how retries work. And at the end, we will learn how to implement caching and how to invalidate cache and update the data. Maybe that sounds complicated, but you will love React Query when you see how easy, simple, and straightforward it is to implement all of this. Go with Sloba. Okay, first, let's see how we can set up React Query to our project. I've assumed that you have installed React Query package already. So first, we need to create a new client. So you can go to index file of your application and let's initialize new query client. So new query client. And make sure to import that from Tenstack React Query. And we get back new client, which we just created. So let's name it as query client. And now what we need to do is we need to pass this to a provider. So we can surround our application using query client provider, like so. And now we need to pass a parameter of client here, client, and we just pass in the query client, like so. Let me remove this white space. So what this does, it makes this query client available to your entire application. And if in one component you fetch a data and you cache it, it will be available throughout the entire application. And that's the beauty of it. So now let's see how we can actually fetch some data from the API using React Query. To perform the fetches, we need use query hook. So let's call this hook, use query, and make sure again to import it on the top. So here, what this hook needs, it needs a key first, so query key. And this needs to be an array. So using this key, query can cache the results that you get back. So let's save the key as products. I'm gonna use some free public API to demonstrate how it works. So, and now the second thing that you need to provide is the actual query function. And the parameter is query fn, short. So this is going to be asynchronous function and obviously it can be any function that returns a promise so i'm going to use axios because this has been being shown as to work the best with axios and i'm just going to use this url that i copied from this free public api and you can use the same uh, url to test this and this is all the setup that we need to do in order to make an api call so how we do get a results back so actually we just return them back and store them in a variable. So let's destructure this variable. We are returning back data variable and we can actually rename it to, let's say, results. And now what we can do is we can just log the results that we are getting. So console log results. And now let me refresh the application and let me actually open up the network tab so you can see what's happening. So if I refresh the application, you can see that we make these products request let me zoom in a little bit and we, we have made this request to this url and you also can see the preview here we get the array of these products and if you open up the console we get the same thing here so inside of the data property beautiful now let's say that you want to actually show a loader while you're loading this data so that's very easy to do so here we get this is loading flag from the use query. And what we can do here is we can check. If we are loading, we can show a message. So if is loading, if this is true, let's return, it would probably return a loader or something, but I would just return a text loading like so. And now because this is fast, you're just gonna see it for a split second. But yeah, let me just refresh. And you can see for a split second, it's loading, right? Now the next thing obviously is error handling. So let's say that this API call uh, fails. So how we can handle or display errors. So here we get is error flag. And now what we can do, obviously we can check if there is an error, display something to the user. So we just check is error there. And if it is, let's return something similar to here. Let's return error like so. 
And now in order to simulate this error, let me just change the URL here, so it's wrong. So let's just add a character here. So now let's refresh the application, and first it's loading, and you can see it's making multiple requests. And this is also a beauty of React Query, because from out of the box, you're getting these refetches or retries. And once it fails, like for the fourth time, it says here, error finally. Nice. And let me remove this A, so it's nice again. And actually, let's see how we can render the list and to perform some other operations. So let's say that we have an order list here and we want to render all these products. So here from the results, I want to map them. So results, and if they exist, we want to access the data and we want to map this data. And inside of this data, we get access to the item or we can call them, uh, yeah, we can call them item. And then we just return back this list item. And the first thing that we need obviously is the key. So set the key to item.id and also let's just log them, item.title. This is the property that these products have. So now let's save this and let me refresh our application and just make sure to return the actual element here because I'm not returning anything. So just rem remove these curly braces to our brackets and we can remove the semicolon like so. And there you go. Also, I see this, uh, I forgot here to use the await key as well because it's asynchronous function, so we should wait for results back. But as you can see, we get the results back and we get the rendered list here. Now, how we can set the cache for these actual products? So let me show you one thing. So if I refresh the application and if I open the network tab, so here, if we re-render our app component, it will refetch the products. So here, if I just click on it, it will cause some re-rendering. And you can see here, we get this additional request. So what we can do is we can add stale time and we can provide how long the cache is gonna be persistent here. So let's add some big numbers. So this is 10 seconds, let's say 100 seconds. So let me save this and let me refresh again. So now we have this fetched products once and if I click on the actual page, it gets re-rendered once again, but you can see we only have this one request because the actual data is getting cached here. Now let's say that once we click on one of these items, we wanna fetch uh, results or data for that specific item. So let's implement that. First, we will need a new variable and let's name this variable as id and we will need updater function so set id and we're going to use use state hook obviously to handle this state here so now when we click on an item we want to set an id to be active here so here on our li element let's call it on click event handler and let's just set here let's set set id to be equal to the item dot id like so but how we can refetch this so what we need to do is let's just copy this and make another query here but we will need to change a couple of things first for the actual data let's say that we don't want to get or actually we don't want to call it as results we want to call it as product result here and for the actual query key we can call it as product and we can add what is the actual key or ID of that specific item that we clicked. Then also we need to change the actual URL. So after the products, we need to provide the actual ID here. And the last thing which we need to do and to enable this to be fetched only when this ID is available, what we need to do is we need to add another property. And this property is called enabled, like so. And here we just want to check if this, uh, let's use the Boolean function to provide this ID. And here we are just checking if this ID is true. So if it's available, call this method. If it's not, don't call it, right? And how we can check what we are getting back is we can add a title, let's say H1. And here we can just say product results or actually product result. And if it's available, we can access its data and show the title on top of our document here.
So let me save this and let's refresh. So let me clear the console and the network tab as well. So first we get these products and now let's say we click on the towels and we get this title towels. And if you check the network tab, we have made a new request and we have added this ID. So now let's say that we click on another thing. Let's say we click on the car, we get another request and we obviously get the data for this, uh, for this product. But let's say that if we remove this stale time, there's an interesting thing here. So you can see how cache works. So if I remove this, and if I save it, let me refresh again. So you can see, let's first click on the shoes. We get the shoes and we get the network request here. Now let's click on the fish and we get another request. But now let's click back to shoes. And you can see it's making the same request again. You know, so it's not caching it. So if we get the stale time back and let me refresh again now. And let's click on the soap. Then we can click on the fish. And if you click back on the soap, we get the data back, but it's not refetching. So it's not making additional requests. And that's beauty of it. And now let's say that we want to update one of these items, right? So let me just collapse this so it's more visible. We need another hook to in order to perform the updates to our API. So we need use mutation. You can use use query for post request as well, but use mutation is recommended one from the library itself. So we just need to initialize our hook here, use mutation, and we return back a mutation object. So we can call it mutation like so. And here you, we need to provide a couple of things. So similar to use query, we need to provide mutation function. So a mutation function, and we just can provide a function and here we can receive a body. So what we want to change or actually what we want to send and we can call an Axios. I just want to make an update. So I will call a put method here and we can use the same method that we used previously. And I will just add, let's say, let me see which one we can test. So for the sausages is the actual ID of 112. So let me use that ID here and we can update that one. So, and when we are going to update that, let me create a button here, which can say update item. And now let's add on click event handler on click. Okay. And let's pass in a new function. And what we want to pass in here, we want to call our mutation object that we got back here and we get mutate function. And what we want to pass in is we want to pass this body, right? So let's say that we want to change title. So title, instead of the, which one we use, I think it was sausages, we can say test one, like so. And now what we need to do is we want to pass this body to the Axios as well. So let's just add a comma here and we want to pass this. And now let me save this and let's refresh. So now if we click on update the item, we should update the sausages. And one thing that you can notice right away is that this is not getting updated, but if you refresh our app, we get this test one here. And if you click on this test one, you can see that the data has been updated. Now let's try out something differently. So let's say that we want to update this to test two, like so, and let me refresh the application. So now if I update the item, we cannot see any changes, but if you click on the test one, you can see that the actual data has been updated. It's test two. So we actually need to invalidate the cache once this has been successful. So how we, how we can do that? So we have a new on success function here on success. And once this has been completed, we can invalidate the data. So here we need to provide a function and we need one thing before we can invalidate. So we need the actual query client. So we need use query client hook. And this, with this hook, we get access to our client. We first need to initialize our hook. So use query client, and we get back the client instance that we created inside of our index application here. So we can call it as query client, and we can call this query client method here once this has been successfully completed and we need to call a method invalidate queries 
and we need to provide what is the actual key that we want to invalidate. So just provide an object and let's provide a query key. And here we want to provide the key which we provided here. Let me see what was it. It was products. So if I copy it and provide here, so what it does, it should basically invalidate the cache and it should update the list. So let's try. Now we have test two and let me change this to test three. And now let's refresh the application and let's update the item again. So here we can see now it's test two. And if I click on the update item, it should get test three, but actually there's a slight delay in the update of the item. So we are actually fetching the, the results before they get updated. So what we can do here is we can set, uh, set timeout, set timeout here. like so and now let's test again so if i refresh now it's going to be test three so let me update this to test four but actually we haven't set up the time so let's set it to one second so it's not that fast and now let's set it to test five because we already updated to test four okay test five and now let's refresh and you can see here once we update the item, it's gonna first update the item and then it's gonna make additional requests to update these products. So update item, first we get this update and then we have another fetch for the products and you can see we have this test five. But there's another problem. So if we have selected, let me show you again. So let me change this to test six here. And now let's refresh the application and let's select this text, test five. So now if I click on the update item, it's just going to update this product, but it's not going to update this item here. So let's try it. Update the item. And you can see we have this text test six. And the reason for that, why it's not updating the, the item here is because we haven't invalidated the cache. So if you click on this test six, we are getting test five because the cache is being kept for this. Let me see for this product ID item. So how we can invalidate is we just provide another invalidate function here. And we need to invalidate with the actual ID. So product and the actual ID is this one. So we can use it interpolation here and let's just put the ID. So now when we update the ID and when we update the product, it should update on both places. So let me save this and let's try once again. Or actually we need to use test seven now okay and here we have test six and if you select we get the test six and this has been cached now but if you go and click update the item it should invalidate and it should update on both of these instances so you get test seven i hope this tutorial was helpful for you and that you have seen how easy it is to work with react query also, if you want to find out more about React Query, I highly suggest you to go and check their documentation. If you want me to create another tutorial about some more advanced features of React Query, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to support my channel and get a full source code of every single video that I'm doing, feel free to check out patreon.com codewithsloba to get full access. See you there. Well, that's all for this React video. Stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more React tutorials, click here.